Hello boys and girls, how are you doing today? In my last video, I was trying not to say all right because I say that a lot. So keep track of how many times I say all right. Hopefully I don't do it except for right now giving these instructions. In your notebooks, I need you to turn to page 29. If you skip 28, that's fine. If you have something on 28, that's fine. But these notes need to go on page 29. Page 29 is going to be solving two-step equations. Solving two-step equations. In sixth grade, we learned one-step equations. We're taking it a step further in seventh grade. We're solving two-step equations. So the way that we're going to go through these notes is while I'm giving you steps, I'm going to be showing you what that looks like in an example. So during these notes, uh, I'm going to color coordinate my steps with my example so you can see exactly what you should be doing, what that step looks like in a problem. I recommend that you use the markers, the colored pencils, if you have your own colored pens, so that you can color coordinate like I'm doing. I think that'll really help you see things better. So feel free to use those if you would like. Alrighty. And at any time, if you, oh, that was one already. You need to tally mark that. Um, if you need to stop, pause, rewind something, hear me say it again, please feel free to go ahead and do that in the video. We've got plenty of time. So our example is going to be for this problem. Oh, I'm sorry, where's my notes? There it is. Our example is going to be 4x minus 3 is equal to 21. 4x minus 3 is equal to 21. In class the other day, I talked about the river of love in your notes, and I told you I was going to explain to you what it meant because it sounds kind of weird. It's not really a step, so I call it step zero. Step zero is to draw the river of love. The river of love is just a little stream that runs along the equation sign. What this river of love reminds us to do is to love both sides of our equation the same. We're going to pretend like you are a parent and these two sides of the equation are your two children. You want to be a good, nice parent and you want to treat both of your equations the same. Because, you know, parents, they don't have favorites. They treat them the same. So whatever I do on one side, I need to do on the other. If I do something on this side, I need to do it over here too. So again, it's not really a step. It doesn't help us solve the problem but it does remind us to keep things balanced. The first real step that we're going to do is we are going to start on the same side as the variable. We are going to start on the same side as the variable and we are going to get rid of the number by itself using inverse operations. Um, we're going to get rid of itself by using addition or subtraction. We determine which one it is by using inverse operations, sorry. So we're going to get rid of the number by itself using addition or subtraction, inverse operations. But it's not whatever number by itself, it's the number that's on the same side as the variable. So first, where's our variable at here? Right here. Remember the variable is the letter. The variable, that's the letter. So we're on the same side as the variable, as our letter. We want to get rid of the number that's by itself. So on the side of the variable, what's by itself? The 4 
or the three. The three is by itself. So that's what we want to get rid of first. We want to get rid of that three because it's all by itself on the same side of the variable. And we need to use inverse operations. Do y'all remember what inverse operations are? Inverse operations are your opposite operations. It's like we talked about addition and subtraction. Those are inverse, those are opposite operations. Multiplication and division, those are inverse, those are opposite operations. So I need to get rid of this minus three. So I need to do the opposite of minus three. What is the opposite of minus three? We need to add three to both sides. If I subtract three and add three, if I minus three and add three, that's gonna make a zero pair. Those are gonna cancel each other out. So all I'm left with on this left side is gonna be a four X. Four X equals, then I need to solve this side. What's 21 plus three? 24. So step one, the real first step is done. Just to add this down just a little bit. Alrighty, we still don't have our variable by itself, so we need to move on to step two. Step two is get rid of the coefficient. That's another vocab word from the other day. Get rid of the coefficient using multiplication or division. Again, we're gonna use inverse operations. In case you forgot the coefficient, that's the number with the variable. Our number with the variable is our coefficient. So we're left with 4x is equal to 24. Now we turn it into a one-step equation. What operation is it if the 4 and the x are side by side and there's nothing in the middle? Is that addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? That's right, that's multiplication. So it's the opposite of multiplication. Division. So we need to divide by four. Divide this side by four. If I multiply by four and divide by four, those things are gonna cancel each other out. So all we're left with on the left side is x. But then on this side, we need to do 24 divided by four. What is 24 divided by four? Six. So now we've got our variable by itself. We see that x is equal to six. Hold your horses, we're not quite done yet. We still need to do step three. Step three is just for us to check our work. Step three is for us to check our work. The way that we do that, we're gonna check by plugging the answer into the original problem. Oh, y'all can't see. We're gonna check our work by plugging our answer into our original problem. Our original problem was 4x minus three equals 21. We want to plug in, we want to plug in our answer into that variable. Plug in means to substitute. So for x, I want x to be six. So I'm gonna take four times six minus three and see if that gives me 21. 
So order of operations. Gem das. Grouping. There's no grouping here. Exponents. There's no exponents here. First, we have to do multiplication or division. Do we have any multiplication or division down here? Yes. We have four times six. What is four times six? 24. So now we've got 24 minus three equals 21. Do we have any more multiplication or division? Nope. So now I've got addition and subtraction. So we need to subtract what is 24 minus 3? 21. And does 21 equal 21? It sure does. We are correct. Give yourself a round of applause. Come on, clap. Alrighty, if you need to pause, rewind, watch something else on the video again, go ahead and do that. But if not, please turn to the page 30 and we're gonna do some examples together. Boop, boop, boop. We're gonna make this a new page because it's ugly for me to see. I don't want you to see that ugly. Again, this is page 30 now that we're on. We're gonna break this up into four quadrants for our four problems. Our first problem is gonna be 5x minus seven is equal to 18. Our second problem is going to be 1 half x plus 1 is equal to 8. Our third one is going to be 4 minus 6x is equal to negative 2. And our last one is going to be x over 4 plus 3 equals 41. Alrighty, we're gonna start up in the top right. 5x minus seven is equal to 18. Please look at your notes if you need to. You just learned this. Nothing wrong with needing to refresh your steps. Flip that page back and forth. What is step zero? What's well, a thing that reminds us to do the same thing to both sides? That river of love. Go ahead and draw that river of love. Now it's time for the first real step. What is the first real step? Which side do we start on? We need to start on the side with the variable and we need to get rid of the number that's by itself. So what's by itself, the five or the seven? The seven's by itself. The five has the X with it. So we wanna keep those two things together right now. We want to get rid of that minus seven using what? Inverse operations, we need to add, we need to do the opposite operations. We need to add seven to both sides. Again, when we subtract and add seven, they're gonna cancel each other out. So all we have left over here is a five X. And then what's 18 plus seven? 25. We're not done yet. X isn't by itself. So what do we have to do to both sides to get it by itself? What operation is it when they're side by side like that? Multiplication. So it's the opposite of multiplication. Division. We need to divide both sides by five. Because if I multiply and divide by five, that cancels each other out. So all we've got is X. And then what's 25 divided by five? Five. So we get X equals five. 
Next problem, what's step zero? The river of love. Can you feel the love tonight? The peace the evening brings. Jack was looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm sorry, buddy. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Alrighty, we got the river of love going. What's step one? What side do we start on? We start on the side with the variable. It's not always gonna be the left side. I just happen to make up these problems where it's always on the left. It could be on the right. You start on the side that has the variable with which number? The number that's by itself, which here is one. What do we need to do to get rid of that one? Inverse operations, so opposite operations. So what do we have to do? Subtract one from both sides. Again, we're doing the opposite operation because we're trying to get the variable by itself. So if I have a positive one and a negative one, if I have opposite things, they cancel each other out so there's nothing left. That's why we're doing this. So those ones are going to cancel out, and all we're left with is 1 half times x is equal to, what's 8 minus 1? 7, that's right. You must have a good math teacher. My next step is coming with a note. A very important note for this next step. To get rid of of a fraction coefficient. If my coefficient, if my number with my x is a fraction, if I want to get rid of it, we need to multiply by the reciprocal. In case you forgot a reciprocal, is where I flip my numerator and my denominator. So one half, my reciprocal, I flip it. My two is now gonna go on top, my one is gonna go on the bottom. So they just trade places. So if I wanna get rid of this one half, I need to multiply by its reciprocal, what I flip it with. So one over two is gonna to flip to be two over one because a two up top and a two on the bottom, they cancel out. A one on the bottom, one up top, they cancel out. So all I'm left with on the left side is an X. And then on this side, I have to multiply by the reciprocal. So I have to take seven times two over one. How do I make seven a fraction so I can multiply across? To make any number a fraction, if you just put it over one, it will become that fraction. So what's seven times two? 14. What's one times one? One. So we get x is equal to 14 over one, which is the same thing as saying what? x equals 14. Nice job, that one's tricky. But that's the biggest thing. To get rid of the fraction, you need to multiply by its reciprocal. Let's come down here. We've got our river of love. Boom, that's an automatic thing for us now. We don't even have to think about it. What side are we starting on? The side with the variable. Starting on the side with the variable. And with which number? Four, the one that's by itself. So, I have four minus six X. This minus though is not with the four. That minus goes with the six. So if I wanna get rid of that four, what do I need to do to get rid of that four? Is it positive or negative, that four? That four is positive. So for me to get rid of that four, what should I do to both sides? Subtract four. 
I need to subtract four from both sides. Because again, this negative goes with the six because it's in front of the six. That negative is not in front of the four. That's a positive four. So to get rid of it, I have to subtract four from both sides. Because a positive four and a negative four make zero. So I'm left with a negative six X. Don't forget about that negative. That's got to stay with it. And then over here, if I have negative two and negative four, what is negative two minus four? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a negative six. So I have negative six X is equal to negative six. What's my next step? I need to get rid of my coefficient, my number that's with the X, by doing inverse operations. So what is negative six and X? What operation is that? Multiplication. So I need to divide. I need to divide both sides by negative six. Don't forget that negative sign. It's very important. Negative six divided by six cancels each other out. So I have X equals, and now I've got six divided by six. Remember, top dog gets the house. So the orange six goes on the inside, green six goes on the outside. What is six divided by six? One. But now I need to figure out, is that a positive one or a negative one? Is that a positive one or a negative one? A way to help you out that I've shown my kids in the past is we had a negative six divided by a negative six. We had two negative numbers. So if you draw out this pyramid, positive up top, negatives on the bottom, you cover up what you multiply or divide. So in this problem, we divided two negative numbers. So I would wanna cover that up. And that tells me that my answer should be positive. So this X should be a positive one. If I had a positive number and a negative number, I'd cover up those two things and I had my answer would be negative. So use this triangle, this pyramid, to help you think, is my answer gonna be positive or negative depending on what I'm multiplying or dividing together? Last problem. Oh boy, last problem. I want you to pause the video. I want you to solve it yourself. Solve it yourself, and then once you're done solving it, play the video to see if you got the right answer. If you have questions along the way, rewatch the video, look back at your steps, and then check at the end once you think you've got your answer. Hopefully you guys got x equals 152. We first need to subtract three from both sides. So we're left with x over four is equal to 38. Then we're dividing that x in the four. So to get rid of it, I need to multiply both sides by four. So I'm left with x is equal to 152. Go ahead, and now I want you to go through all these problems and check. Make sure your answer makes sense. So one more time, pause the video. One more time, pause the video. Check all your answers, make sure they work out, and then check with me to make sure you're good on the video, not in real life. Alrighty, everything checked out for me, so hopefully it does for you too. On every single formative, on every single summative, please make sure you're checking your answer. It doesn't take long, make sure that you are right. Go ahead, if you have questions on this, still please ask me or Mr. Snook. And if not, move on to the next section on your checklist.